Hello, and welcome to the nave. It is so great to have you with us today, wherever or whenever you're joining us, you are so welcome. We know that you are itching to have your say about online church. And don't worry, the survey is in the works. You can expect either an email sometime this week or keep an eye on our social media pages where we're going to be posting a link to the online survey. We are really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. House groups and life groups. They are so important. They give us the opportunity to grow in community with our church family. They give us space to develop our faith and intimacy with God. And they surround us with people who want to encourage us and pray for us and support us. So if you're not involved in a house group or life group and you'd like to be, we're starting an online house group. Um, all you need to do is email office at stmikes.net to register your interest. Coming up in today's service, we're going to start with a time of sung worship as we bring our praise to God. Then we're going to be hearing from Hannah and Paul and finding out what they've been learning from the Bible this week. Then Andy is going to be bringing us our reading from the Word and Mark is going to be talking about action and reaction as we continue our sermon series in the book of Acts. And then finally, Glan and Sarah are going to lead us into a time of prayer and worship. But before we do any of that, let's get our hearts right before God as we confess our sins to him. Lord, maker of heaven and earth, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words and in our actions, and we have failed to do the things that we should have. Lord, we are sorry and we truly repent of our sins. Lord, would you strengthen us by the power of your spirit that we can live and walk in this world as children of light. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus spilled on that cross that gives us this forgiveness so freely. Amen. Let's worship. Yeah. 
Hi friends, welcome to the stable. Hi friends, hope you're staying safe. Today, this crazy thing happens where Paul and Silas get put into prison. Why did they get put into prison? They got put into prison for talking about Jesus. What? For doing what we do every week? Gosh, how miserable must they have been? Well, it's funny you should say that actually, Paul. I'm not sure they were as miserable as you'd expect them to be. In fact, they were even singing praises to God in prison. What? While in prison? Well, what happened? Well, it gets more fun because as they were singing, there was an earthquake and the prison doors flew open and the chains fell off people's arms and feet. Wow, did everyone escape? I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to wait for our Bible reading. But we are going to do a little activity together. We're going to have some time to praise God. We're going to put the word praise on the screen. And I wonder if you could see how many different praise words for God you can come up with from every letter of the word praise. Perhaps if you speak another language, you could do our little activity in the language you usually speak. Right, off we go. Thank you, God, that Paul and Silas praised you no matter what. Help us to praise you no matter what. Amen. Paul and Silas in prison. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned round to her and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realised that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews, and they're throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowds joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We're all here! The jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to the others in his household. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptised. Jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. 
When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jail with the order, Release those men. The jailer told Paul, The magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens. And they threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No, let them come and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and encouraged them. Then they left. Hello. It's not often we start with a discussion of Newton's laws of motion. But his third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And we see a little of that principle in our reading today. Paul and Silas get into action and immediately there's a reaction against what they've done. There are beatings, jail and all sorts of things happen. So we're going to unpack this passage together, but first let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and we pray that you'll speak to us as we hear it being explained now. And we pray that you'll be with us by the power of your Holy Spirit and challenge us to walk ever closer with you. Amen. So today we're going to see a rescue, a result, a response, repentance, reversal, and reputation. So we start with a rescue, and our story today begins with a rescue. We've got Paul and Silas, and they're being followed about by a slave girl. Now she's possessed by a spirit which her owners have been exploiting to make money by using her for fortune telling. She comes across Paul and Silas on one of their trips to their place of prayer, and she follows them around, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. Well, of course, this is true, uh, but we know that she didn't follow her own advice and listen to them. Uh, She was just plaguing them by shouting at them. And Paul and Silas certainly didn't want the gospel message associated with the magic of the day. So after several days of this, Paul got fed up with this, not surprisingly. But rather than cursing her or threatening her, no, he heals her. He casts out that evil spirit that's inside her and she's set free from her possession. She's rescued from her situation. So the story starts well. It starts with a rescue. But what's the result? Well, a whole lot happens. This incident leads to the conversion of a jailer and his whole household, a growth in the church and blessings, but it doesn't start too well. The slave girl's owners realise that they can't make money out of her anymore, and they bring Paul and Silas before the authorities. They accuse them of teaching customs that are unlawful for Romans. Now, in those days, only authorised religions, like Judaism, were allowed to be practiced. Anything else was against the law. So technically, by preaching Christianity, Paul and Silas were going against the rules of the day. So these slave owners, they get the crowd on their side and they bring them before the magistrates. And the magistrates, without bothering to investigate the accusations any further, they order that Paul and Silas be flogged and jailed. And once more, Paul becomes aware that following Jesus certainly isn't an easy way. The opposition he faced was on three levels. It's often the same opposition that we face today as Christians. The opposition that Paul and Silas faced here was spiritual, financial and political. It began, you see, with the tormenting of the girl following them everywhere while they were trying to preach. The evil spirit and the slave girl interfered with their evangelism and the prayer meetings that they were holding. Spiritual opposition. 
and we need to be on guard against spiritual opposition. And then we have the reaction of the slave girl owners, upset because they were going to lose money. Opposition on financial grounds. And we've seen that in our world over the past few years with things like uh, pressure to change Sunday trading laws in order for people to make money and to place money at the centre of things. And then we have political opposition by the slave owners again. Uh, these people, they say, are not keeping to the Roman laws. They're not going along with society's rules, with what has been agreed. And today we see the same opposition to the church on the same lines. And churches come under pressure to adopt the social customs, the standards and the morals of the world around. Opposition that comes. That was the result. So we've seen the rescue, the result. What about the response from Paul and Silas? Well, we see Paul and Silas here, as a result of this, find themselves in stocks, in the torture section of the inner prison. And we catch up with them in the middle of the night. And their response? Well, I don't think it would have been mine, but their response is to pray, to praise God and to sing hymns. They hold an impromptu prayer and praise party in the darkness of the prison. Their faith was secure in their God. They knew he had this in his control. And whatever was going to happen in the morning, release or death, they were in God's hands. And just in case there wasn't long left for them on this earth, they didn't want to waste it by sleeping. They wanted to spend their time in praise and prayer to God. As one commentator points out about their attitude, he says, they were beaten up, but not beaten down. What about us? Do we have the same attitude? I remember a chorus that we would sing in Sunday school as a child. Why should I care if the sun doesn't shine? Jesus is mine all of the time. What a challenge this is to us when things aren't going well. Do we whinge and complain about all that's going on? Or like Paul and Silas, do we pray and sing praises to God? The rescue, result, response. What happens next? Well, there's an earthquake, maybe in response to this prayer session, and everyone is freed. Uh, those who are captive are now free, and it's the jailer who's now in danger. In those days, if a jailer allowed his prisoners to escape, he'd face the same sentence as his prisoner. And in this case, it's likely to be death. So he decides to cut short the agony and kill himself until Paul calls out and tells him to stop. He's shaken up and comes before Paul and Silas. In our Bibles, the translation given is uh, the jailer speaking to Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that sounds too easy, particularly for preachers. It sounds like he's aware of the gospel, his need for salvation, but he's actually from a pagan background, would have little concept of heaven or hell or an afterlife. It's probably more asking what he needs to do to be safe, what he needs to do next. Tom Wright translates this verse as, Gentlemen, please will you tell me how I can get out of this mess? And that's a good translation. It's not often, even as a vicar, that people ask me, what must I do to be saved? But often we're all asked, how can I get out of this mess? How can I get out of this mess? Well, the answer to two questions is the same. You need God to rescue you. Here, Paul and Silas spend time explaining the good news of salvation and freedom and new life in Christ. And then we see real repentance here. The jailer and his household realize their need of a savior and they get baptized publicly in front of everyone there as a sign of repentance and turning to Christ. Rescue, result, response, repentance. And next, there is this beautiful reversal. Because there's a complete reversal in the roles here, and even personality. This same jailer who threw them into that inner prison cell, cruelly bound them in the stocks, what's he doing now? He's now bathing their wounds 
and then he goes and cooks a meal for them. The love and the care, where's that come from? He's been transformed. He's completely changed. I wonder if you've met anybody who's been completely transformed, completely changed. I met someone just this last week who has completely changed since last I saw him. The last time I saw him, he was in my class when I was a teacher, and he was 10 or 11 years old. Uh, and now in, in his 20s, a whole lot taller, broader, uh, and a completely different person. Completely transformed. When someone becomes a Christian, the mark of their new life is a radical change brought about by the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what's happened to this jailer. Just a few verses ago, he was on the point of killing himself. And now verse 34, how does he get described? As being filled with joy. What a transformation. He's found God. That's the difference that God can make. I don't know what your situation is this week. What it is you're going through. Maybe you're in one of those prisons. You can ask God to release you and to fill you with joy even to enable you to sing in the dark places. This is God at work here. And there's a complete reversal, a complete transformation for the jailer here. And then our passage here ends rather strangely. Uh, the magistrates order that the men should be released. And you'd expect Paul and Silas to go off quietly, but they don't. Because Paul is concerned for something. Our last point, reputation. The reputation of the church. You see, Paul and Silas have been beaten. They've been beaten illegally. Roman citizens should never be the subject to a public beating without a trial and imprisoned. They've got their rights. They're not guilty. Paul here is concerned to establish their innocence for the sake of the church. This might happen again. Other preachers might be brought before these same magistrates. And it's important for the town and for everyone to see that Paul and Silas are innocent. They haven't just escaped, sneaked out from the prison in the middle of the night and are making their way out of the city. Paul demands an official escort. He's concerned for the reputation of the church. As Christians, we carry the name of Christ. We don't want to bring dishonour on his name. And right at the end of the passage, then Paul and Silas meet up with the other believers to encourage one another. And it's important that we do this too, whether that's in person or online. We need to support one another through difficult times. Follow the example here from Paul and Silas. So that's Paul and Silas's adventures today, released from physical prison, but helping others be released from spiritual prisons. So as we finish, if you feel like you're trapped or in prison, if you need someone to pray with you, then do contact us and we'd be happy to help. Details of how to contact our team are below and we look forward to hearing from you.
Sometimes it can be really difficult to come to God in prayer or in worship. Perhaps life has just gotten really busy and you find yourself distracted. Or maybe something has happened that has shaken you to your very core. In our reading today, we saw Paul and Silas in the depths of prison. And what are they doing? They're bringing their praise and worship to God and coming before him in prayer. It's so often that we see in the Bible that at people's darkest moments, that is when God is most at work. So with that in mind, let's go into a time of prayer and worship. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for the nave. I pray, Father, that you would bless this online community I thank you that we've had the opportunity to build a community and to worship together wherever we are, that we can watch this service in the lounge, in our bedrooms, in the kitchen, even on our phone on the way to work. 
I thank you so much that we've built this community. And I pray that you would bless every single one of us that worships here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, we just lift up to you the summer holidays that are coming up, Father. I just pray that you'll bless the children as they have some time off school after such a difficult year. Mm. I pray that you'll bless the teachers as they get some time off, Lord. Mm. I just thank you for all the work that they've done, Lord, in, in helping all of the children. Mm. And Lord, we pray for families to have a really good time and that you'll protect them as they travel around and, and do different things, Lord. Just ask that you'll keep them safe and just bring them joy, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Father, with coronavirus cases on the rise again, I pray that you would protect every single one of us. And especially that at the moment, it's affecting the, the young people. And we know, Father, that you love us and that you love us coming to you as children. I thank you, Father, that we have you as a father. We can call you any time and that you stand with us. Thank you so much that you are so strong and such a loving God. Thank you so much, Father, that you love us. And help us, Father, to, to love one another and to care for each other. In your name, amen. Amen. Lord, we just lift to you the current situation of, of racism in our society, Lord. And Father, I thank you that the sporting world and famous people can draw attention to it, Lord. But I just ask that you would put things in place, Lord. That you'd set things in motion to protect people from discrimination, from being singled out, Lord. And that as individuals, Father, you will help us to be mindful of what we say, and what we do, or what we don't do, or what we don't say, Lord. Mm. Father, you love us all equally. And so I just ask, Lord, that you will help us to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together.
had sealed the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion declared the grave Then came the morning that sealed the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no Hallelujah. Praise the one who sets us free. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for what you did on that cross and that you brought the hope of our salvation through your blood. Lord, we thank you that you walk with us in this life. But more than that, you give us a hope of an eternal life with you in heaven. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you that you seek after us and love us, that you would lay down your life for us. Amen. We really hope that today's service has blessed you in some way. And if anything has resonated with you and you want to talk about it, you can email us at office at stmikes.net or you can call us during office hours at 01970 617 184 and we would love to talk to you. Uh, there is prayer available straight after the service and to get the Zoom codes for that, all you need to do is email office at stmikes.net. Equally, if you're watching this later in the week and you'd like prayer, just email us at prayer at stmikes.net and a team will be praying for you. Don't forget, there is so much more to church life than just what happens on our online service. If you'd like to find out anything uh, about what's going on in the week from our children's and youth work to our prayer meetings, um, then you can find it in our weekly notice sheet or you can email office at St. Mike's to find out more. Or just keep an eye on our social media pages. We post there daily about what is happening in church life. I really hope you have a fantastic week. But before you go, let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.